Oh, let me be really clear about something for everybody listening right now, because we've had this conversation going on here for a few minutes. I am not advocating going 100% to cash and then back into the markets. That's sure. a very difficult thing to do because what happens is you get all out of the market and then the market turns around and goes back up and you're and you get trapped in that psychological problem of well I just got out and I've got to buy back in and you know it's and you wind up doing a whole host of bad things. The best thing to do is is simply when you start getting signals is to slowly step in or step out of the markets. You know, move gradually. There's nothing that says you've got to, you know, be 100% invested all the time. Um, it's like playing poker and being all in on every hand. You're eventually going to lose, right? So there's nothing says that you just can't step in and step out. So what the what the model in the newsletter does for you is it lays out an allocation and that you can kind of line yourself up to. It doesn't have to be exact. You can just kind of get in the ballpark. And then when the signals change, it reduces the amount of equity exposure um, up or down, depending on what's going on. So at least it sure. gives you a guide, guide you know, to follow. And yes, inside your 403, 403B, you can, uh, you know, you may not have a, a money market option. You may, you might have something called a stable value, which is perfect. It, it doesn't lose value, it doesn't go up and down in price. But if you don't have those, you can use a, a very short duration bond fund or something else that that has a lot less volatility as your cash holding, while you're letting your equities do whatever they're doing, right? Right. Okay, that makes sense. I've only been in, you know, when when I first started the the the, the guy who manages it for us. I mean, he's got me in like a bunch of different, got the money in a bunch of different stuff. Right. So, how, how much uh, do you, you mind? Know, do you mind if I ask you how much how much money do you have in here? Is it more than ten thousand? Less than? No, not yet. I, I haven't been. I haven't been with it more than six months. Okay. So you shouldn't be. Um, okay. So the reason I ask you that is that you shouldn't be in a whole bunch of stuff. Right. With ten thousand dollars, you should be in two things, a stock fund and a bond fund. Let me tell you why. First of all, you're doing something new you don't know a whole lot about yet. So don't make it more complicated than it needs to be. Change your 401k plan to 50 percent S&P 500, 50 percent bond fund for right now. Right. Or something like that. Just pick a mix, whatever you like. But do two things. And what you'll what you'll start to see is is over time you'll start to see the relationship between these two investments and how they ebb and flow with each other, and you'll start getting a with having just two items it'll give you a better opportunity to manage your allocation, learn how to manage the risk, learn how to, how 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 the market works, and then when you get more comfortable then you can say okay now I'm gonna add in a little bit of international now I'm gonna put in a little bit of you know gold or whatever it is right. But learn how the market works first by keeping it simple. Just use a stock fund and a bond fund. That's all you need and, and go from there. The reason that people stick a whole bunch of stuff in there, they go, well, it's, you're, 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 you're really well diversified and allocated. In the old days, that worked. Everything today is 100% correlated almost. It all goes up together, all goes down together. So, you know, all you're doing is confusing the problem and <laughs> creating more risk in the portfolio because you really don't even know how you're allocated. Oh, yeah, I'd agree with that because just in looking at it the other day, I was like, "Wow, it seems like I'm in." I'm, I'm probably the money's probably divided up into ten different funds. Yeah, that's not doing. It's not doing. You know, a few hundred, maybe barely a thousand dollars in each fund, and I'm yeah. like, "Wow, this is this is really confusing. This is a lot of stuff." Well, and, not, and, and not, it is diverse. Some of it's less risky, some of it's more risky, but it's just yeah. a lot of stuff. Well, it is, and then but when you start talking about a hundred, a couple hundred dollars in this, and a couple hundred dollars in that. You know, if you get if you have a hundred dollars in something and it goes up ten percent, you make a dollar, right? Or right. ten or ten dollars. Well, if the fees on that fund, you know, are you know a, a couple of bucks, it eats into your into your returns very quickly. So when you start layering in all these additional fees because of the underlying funds, it really starts to impact your returns. So, but again, that's that's a, that's a whole separate story for later. Let's get simple and let's learn how it works. And I, I really go to the website and download the newsletter. Just read, the, skip all the first part, right? It's a bunch of a bunch of stuff. Go right to the bottom and you'll see it says, it says 401k plan manager. And just look at that. And I think it'll help you make sense of things. All right, I appreciate the time. Thanks, appreciate it.